This is Dr. Stonegale, and this mini lecture is going to be on conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis is an inflammation of the conjunctiva or the mucous membrane that covers the front of the eye. And this protects the eye against foreign materials as well as microorganisms. Pink eye refers to non nesorrhea bacterial conjunctivitis. So there's an inflammation or infection of the transparent membrane. And this lines your eyelid and covers the white part of your eyeball. So when you get conjunctivitis, the conjunctiva becomes inflamed. You'll see a reddish appearance or a pink uh, color to the conjunctiva. There's quite a few causes, different causes to uh, conjunctivitis. With the viral Conjunctivitis, it is usually caused by the adenovirus type 3. It can also be caused by Coxsackie virus, as well as varicella zoster, molluscum, or herpes simplex. It can also be associated with colds and upper respiratory infections. So many times you'll see patients come in to the office and they'll have a viral conjunctivitis and they'll have a history of having some type of a URI. Also, as far as sore throats, and um, it is very contagious, highly contagious, and which is, uh, can be spread through direct or indirect content of eye secretions. So it's very um, important that the patients don't touch their eyes and then touch a pen or touch something else on the desk and then someone else touches that because it is spread um, rapidly. With the bacterial type, it is usually caused by a staph or a strep as well as um, Haemophilus in, uh, influenza and M. catarallis, Pseudomonas, and N. gonorrhea. But the majority of the time you're going to see it's, it's from either staph or from strep. It seems to be the most common causative agent. With allergic uh, conjunctivitis, the response is to some type of an allergy. So it could be from cosmetics. It could be pollen in the air. It could be some type of uh, animal dander. It's a histamine that is released leading to the redness or that pink color of the eye, and it's usually a IgE mast cell hypersensitivity reaction. So the patient may have not even realized they have an allergy until they begin to get these type of symptoms. And then with a non-allergic type of conjunctivitis, which is kind of rare to see, it's usually a reaction to a mechanical or to something chemical that the patient has been exposed to and that they are um, reacting to. So what are the risks of getting pink eye? Well, if you, um, the risk of getting a bacterial would be high if you wear contact lenses, if you're exposed to someone who's infected, or if you rub your eyes continuously. So if you have dirt on your hands and then you're rubbing your eyes or you're not washing your hands before you remove your contact lenses and then you put your contact lenses in with dirty hands, this increases your risk of getting bacterial. The allergic risk is when you, as I said, you're exposed to pollen or grass weeds, um, animal dander, cats, dogs, something like that. And then the chemical to irritate, some type of irritating chemical substances. People who work in chemical plants may uh, get this type of reaction. And just the use of contact lenses in general increases the risk. Regardless of the type of symptoms that the patient, the type of um, conjunctivitis that the patient has, all patients are going to have some type of marked diffuse redness as well as watery and stringy and purulent discharge. What you're going to see different with each type of conjunctivitis is that with viral, there's conjunctival injection. You'll see the patient have a, a watery discharge. They may have some swelling. They may have burning, as well as having had a, con a concurrent upper respiratory infection. You may also see that they have preauricular uh, node enlargement or that they have um, a gritty sensation to uh, their eye. So there's, they tell you there's something in their eye. It feels gritty and scratchy. With the bacterial, you'll see that it does occur with a rapid onset, and they have a purulent exudate. Initially, it's most of the time unilateral, and then it goes to being bilateral. Their eyes will be matted shut when they wake up in the morning. Their eyelids are swollen, and um, they're usually very uncomfortable when they come in. 
With an allergic, the hallmark sign is the itching. They'll also get some tearing as well as sneezing and uh, rhinitis. They may also have some conjunctival edema. And then just, just to give you um, a little bit of update on chlamydial, that you'll also see some profuse exudate with chlamydial, although we don't get into that in the course. It's something that you need to just kind of keep in the back of your mind if you see someone who's... Um, who's got this. And this is just a couple pictures of conjunctivitis. You'll see the bacterial on the left side. You can see the purulent exudate that's draining, the crusting that's occurring, and that it is bilateral. With the viral, you see the injected conjunctiva and um, sclera, as well as the um, redness and the periorbital edema. In allergic, you can see the amount of swelling. So they've got, you know, so they've got the marked conjunctival edema here with the redness. And usually they're very uncomfortable when you see these patients with this. And I just threw in these two pictures to show you um, these two types of chlamydia and hyperacute bacterial. You'll see a lot of this in if you're working with neonates, which, you know, this is an adult course, but I wanted to bring this to your attention because adults do get chlamydial as well as hyperacute bacterial, but it is very rare that they do get that. So we're thinking about history. Um, your old carts obviously comes into play when you're trying to get a history on these patients. Want to make sure to ask them about their location, their onset, their duration. Is this an acute event? Is this something that's been chronic or reoccurring? How much discharge do they have? When did the discharge start? Because the symptoms are really going to vary. And so you need to be asking them specific questions in regards to this. What is the type um, of discharge? Is it mucopurulent? Are they getting just watery? Is it unilateral or bilateral? Do they get blurry vision? Do they have pain? Do they have sensitivity to light? Most of them will have a, a sensitivity to light. Um, do they have any itching? Do they have a history of allergies or eye trauma? And do they use contact lenses or over-the-counter meds? All of these are important to get when you're thinking about the history to lead you to the correct diagnosis for the patient. On physical examination, we want to assess their visual acuity, and that really is a priority um, for these patients. You want to make sure of, of, that they do have uh, vision. And then you want to perform a complete eye exam. So you're going to begin by thinking back to what, what your eye exams were in your physical assessment course, inspecting the eyelid, palpating the eyelid, making sure there aren't any masses or tenderness, and then everting the eyelid and looking at that inner surface of the eye, as well as inspecting the sclera and the conjunctiva. You want to make sure to document the amount and the color of the discharge if it's present and then check to see if they have any preauricular enlargement because preauricular enlargement will kind of gear you to what they have. It is not seen if with a bacterial or with an allergic type of a conjunctivitis, but you will see it with viral and also the chlamydial or the hyperacute. But there is no preauricular adenopathy with um, bacterial or allergic. So as we look at the treatment for these different types of conjunctivitis, we'll start with the viral. And with viral, the treatment is really just directed towards symptomatic relief and limiting the spread of infections to others because it is so highly contagious. A lot of um, times we use conservative treatment with artificial tears every four hours, cool compresses, and that does help to reduce the um, discomfort of lit edema and antihistamines also help to take some of the symptoms away. But we really don't use antibiotics since it's viral in origin, but there may be certain cases when you suspect that there could be a bacterial, um, you know, origin, a secondary bacterial infection, or that you may think that they could be getting one, so you're using it more for preventative. And at that time, then, you could go into like a five-day course of erythromycin ointment or even a polytrim ointment. As we look at the bacterial treatment um, options, most of the time 
with bacterial, we use the topical rather than the systemic antibiotics because they're less likely to cause adverse effects or to select for resistant organisms. So the erythromycins work very well um, when you're using these as an ointment as well as polytrim. We like to use the polytrim because um, whereas the polymix B alone, it has only gram negative spectrum, making it relatively ineffective. By adding the trimethoprim, it has a broad spectrum. So it's got methicillin uh, resistant staphylococci also. The combination of these two drugs then is a really good choice for the treatment. Azithromycin is another good option using it, um, and it's, it's really active against gram-positive microbes and against H, um, H influenza. So twice a day for two days and then instilling once a day for five days. This sodium sulfidamide also, uh, sulfacetamide also works very well as well as bacitracin ointment. The quinolones, which are your ciprofloxacin, they're effective against most of the common um, eye bacterial pathogens. So they work very well, and um, we see real good results with those. The treatment for allergic is usually self-limiting. Most cases of acute allergic conjunctivitis last only two to three days. So giving them a simple and inexpensive option uh, is good, such as Zyrtec or Claritin or Allegra over-the-counter. The most common symptom, as I had said, is itching, and which can be relieved by any of these second-generation drugs which are available to them. And I like to use the non-sedating ones because I think the non-sedating ones are much better for the patients when they have to be driving, they have to be going to work, they have to be taking care of children. So I really stay away from the Benadryl um, type of antihistamines because they are very sedating. And let's think about when we would refer patients for emergent management if any, uh, you know, if we needed to. So if they have any pain in the eye, you would want to think about referring them if they have any decreased visual acuity or if they um, fail to really improve within at least 24 to 48 hours, you don't see any type of treatment, um, you know, resolution. And we need to think about the differential diagnoses with these patients. And these are kind of far-fetched diagnoses, but, you know, we can look at the simple ones such as the blepharitis. Do they have an abrasion? Do, do they have maybe um, an obstruction in their lacrimal duct? Or you can get into the things that might be a little more um, intense, such as acute angle glo closure glaucoma, the anterior uveitis, iritis, scleritis, keratitis. Those are things you probably would not see much, but they still need to be in the back of your mind as far as a differential diagnosis.